What's going on everybody? It's Thomas DeLauer with sixpackabs.com and today I'm dropping some knowledge on you in the world of hormones. I'm talking about two hormones that are making you gain fat and making it hard to burn fat unbeknownst to you. You're just cruising through life and these things are taking effect. I'm talking about estrogen and cortisol. Not the typical testosterone you were expecting me to talk about, right? Okay, let's get right into the details because if you stick with me through this video, I'm going to explain the solutions that you can implement to fight off these hormones that are affecting you negatively. But in order for that to make sense, I have to explain a little bit of the physiology. So let's go to school for a minute. First, let's talk about estrogen. Estrogen is not a bad thing, all right? When it's in check, it actually helps you burn fat. It actually helps you regulate insulin in the right way. The problem is, very, very few people, and I talk to a lot of people, are in estrogen check. You see, when we have a lot of estrogen, it throws off all kinds of things. And we live in this extremely estrogenic world where we're constantly exposed to excess estrogens. Now, we have this issue called estrogen dominance. Now, it sounds like that's just excess estrogen, but estrogen dominance is actually a number of things. It can be too much estrogen, it can be too little estrogen, but for women, it can be too little progesterone that's throwing off the ratio of estrogen and progesterone. So there's a few different things that come into play there. Now, when we look at the external estrogens that are affecting us, they're called xenoestrogens, and they affect us in a lot of different ways. But more than anything, they just increase our overall levels of estrogen in the body. These are xenoestrogens that are coming from things like plastics, they're coming from soy, they're coming from isoflavones that are not good, they're coming from a lot of external factors and toxins that, believe it or not, do affect us even though we don't necessarily want to believe it. But let's talk about how estrogen actually affects our fat accumulation in the body. So if you've ever wondered what makes a woman thicken up or what makes a man go kind of soft, well, it ends up being estrogen, simply because it's much more of a tissue that accumulates fat. And once you start having a high level of estrogen, you get these things that are called estrogen-sensitive tissues. These estrogen-sensitive tissues are much more apt to store body fat and then create more estrogen. See, it's this vicious cycle. The more fat you accumulate, the more estrogen that binds to that area. The more estrogen that you have, the more fat that stores to that area. So you can see how it steamrolls and it just exponentially gets worse and worse and worse. Now we have areas of the body that are more predisposed to estrogen. These again are the estrogen sensitive tissues. In men, it's usually the waist area and the chest. If you've ever heard of gynecosmastia before, it's where a male starts to develop breast tissue. It's usually because their estrogen levels are high. Now in women, they start to develop more tissues and more fat in the buttocks, in the upper thighs, and also in the breast and in the waist. Now that ties right in hand with what makes a woman a woman. You can see estrogen is a female hormone. Now the problem when it comes to estrogen isn't the fact that it steamrolls and it makes you add more fat. It's the fact that it's very, very stubborn. You see, you can't just burn it off like you can regular fat. Because it's estrogen sensitive, it's responding to a hormone. That means there's not enough diet or training in the world that can really take that estrogen off of you. It all comes down to special little tweaks that you have to make to your diet to control the estrogen from a hormonal and an endocrine standpoint. So what's the solution when it comes to estrogen? Well, we have to remember we live in an estrogenic world, period. Everything around us is generally causing an increase in estrogen. But we also have a lot of things that can decrease estrogen, and it's very black and white. So I like to look at it in two ways. We've got the bad world and the good world. Okay, The good world is an estrogen inhibiting world. The bad world is an estrogen promoting world. And it really comes down to making a conscious decision and making some changes to your diet to live in the estrogen inhibiting world meaning you're starting to make choices where you don't expose yourself to estrogen. And it's about a three to six month time period before you start making those changes between when your body really starts to reduce the estrogen chronically. So let's take a look at some of the things that are increasing estrogen in your body so that you can learn to stay away from them. You want to avoid non-organic vegetables. And the reason simply is because those non-organic vegetables have high levels of pesticides that are known to be extremely, extremely potent xenoestrogens. Then you want to avoid most meats that have excess hormones in them, or any hormones for that matter, simply because those hormones are xenoestrogens. So when you're looking to buy meat, you want to make sure that you're not getting ones that have RBST or added growth hormone to them. 
that would definitely be bad. And you don't necessarily have to go organic, although it does make a difference. You just wanna be watching out for the hormones. Next, don't be eaten out of plastic Tupperware anymore, okay? Make the investment, spend a couple more bucks, get the glass Tupperware, carry a little extra weight, you could use the pump anyway, who cares, and you're going to end up being a lot better off. Lastly, start cutting out the canola oils. Replace the canola oils with coconut oil, avocado oil, or macadamia nut oil. These canola oils and vegetable oils are so high in omega-6s, not only do they increase inflammation and make it hard for you to recover, but they also end up triggering an estrogen response that can start that vicious cycle of you storing fat in all the wrong places. Okay, now we gotta talk about cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone, but a lot of us give it such a bad rap because of that. We think, okay, cortisol equals stress, that's bad. No, don't think of it like that. Cortisol is your body's response to stress, okay? It's trying to help you. It's trying to help you. It sees you get stressed out, so cortisol elevates to be like, hey man, chill out, chill out, we're good, we're good. That's the whole idea there. So don't get mad at cortisol. The thing is, if cortisol is elevated for a really long period of time, that cool dude, that chill dude that's over there telling you to chill out, telling you to mellow out, he gets tired, he needs to go to bed. So that means the cortisol starts to burn out and he starts getting upset and he starts wreaking havoc on your body. So let's talk about what happens when you have high levels of cortisol in your body all the time. It basically ends up making you gain fat in three separate pathways, okay? The first way is absolutely mind blowing. It ends up causing you to redistribute fat without even consuming excess calories. Yes, you can take fat that is not even mobilized and is dormant in another area of your body and mobilize it to end up going to your waist just by having high levels of cortisol. That means a 200 pound man can actually stay a 200 pound man and redistribute more fat to his belly, particularly the visceral fat area. That visceral area is the layer underneath your muscle, not on top of the muscle underneath the skin. So it's the kind that makes you have that pot belly that makes you distended. Now the issue with that visceral fat is it ends up being very, very high in cortisol receptors. So that means that it's a vicious circle again. That means the more that you have that visceral body fat, the more cortisol your body's gonna create and the more cortisol your body's gonna send there, making it exponentially grow. It sucks, we don't want that. The next reason that cortisol affects you is simply because it makes your blood sugar remain highly elevated for a long period of time. When that happens, you start becoming insulin suppressed, meaning your body isn't producing as much insulin, so that blood sugar just stays elevated. Well, that triggers a response in your brain that tells you to eat more. So your hunger goes up, you end up eating a lot more. And in that same vein, there's number three. The reason that cortisol ends up making us eat more is simply because we have receptors in our brain, in our hypothalamus, that directly communicate with cortisol. So cortisol tells the brain, get hungry, get hungry, eat more. And it causes us to, well, eat more. Okay, so now we understand. We've got estrogen and cortisol. I've talked about what you can do for the estrogen life, but what can you do to help cortisol? I've got one simple trick, and this is backed by a study, so I wanna make sure I lay it out for you. When you finish your workout, consume two to 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C along with your post-workout drink or whatever meal you have. Studies have shown that salivary cortisol levels dramatically decrease after the consumption of vitamin C. They did this test looking at public speakers, measured their heart rate, measured their blood pressure, and their salivary cortisol levels. So that's all you gotta do. Of course, live a stress-free life, try to get more sleep, try to practice some meditation now and then, but also don't overtrain, listen to your body. You're better off having lower cortisol and skipping a day at the gym than you are forcing yourself going to the gym, raising those cortisol levels and having the fat go right here. All right, everybody, there you have it. The two hormones that are affecting you that you didn't know were. Make sure you keep it locked in here on sixpackabs.com and check out some of the other videos from sixpackabs.com so we can bring you all kinds of crazy cool stuff that's gonna help you get in the best possible shape of your life in a science-backed way. Make sure you check out some of Johnny's workout videos as well. Keep it locked in here at sixpackabs.com. I'll see you soon.